course, you are embarrassingly weak and far too decent to compete with your Catherine the Great. Uncle Jarvis, I'm warning you, I don't want to hear any more talk about you. Look, this whole thing better work. It just better work, that's all. Oh, it'll work. I planned it. And now let's be off to conclude phase one. Headlights off. I know. Dashboard clock set back to 12.18. Windows up. Emergency brake off? Yes. Flaps up, wheels down. Would you mind? But don't just stand there, push! So the uh, vehicle's point of descent is right over there. You'll notice the skid marks, of course. It's a little uh, steep. Yes, sir. But I'll tell you, it was the quickest way down. Oh, yes, by far. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Goodland was uh, halted by the shot you were looking at there, forced out of the car, which was then pushed over the side. This to conceal the fact that he was grabbed by person or persons unknown. That jibe with your thinking, sir? This is Lieutenant, uh... Columbo. Uh, how do you do, sir? This is Jarvis Goodland, Tony's uncle. Do I hear you say you have something to tell us? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Goodland. Um, we found your husband's car about an hour ago. It was in a canyon off Middle Cross Road. You already heard this? Uh, Lieutenant, I received a letter from Tony. <laughs> Well, he's perfectly all right, really. Uh, how big a ransom did the letter ask for, ma'am? You already knew. Oh, no, no. No, uh, is that an extra? No, it's just that letters to wives and relatives saying don't talk to the police, they often involve a kidnapping, and I mean, uh, the way I could just barely get into the house here, just not right here at the door. Well, I make these small observations. I can't help it, ma'am, uh, sometimes. Lieutenant, we got a ring. Answer it. Yes? Tell Jarvis. He's to go to Cal, Texas gas station. 5835 East Wilshire. Wait for call. Public phone booth. You got that? Yes, I've got that. Tony, are you all right? Have they hurt you? You sound so...
would you look at these lovely green bricks? Beautiful. Far too beautiful for you to waste your half on that woman. That woman happens to be my wife, and I want to keep her. Money's what it takes. Money's what she'll have. What a waste. No, Tony, no. The time has now come for me to explain to you phase three. <laughs> According to the coroner's intern, the bullet apparently went directly through the heart. Fired at extremely close range as indicated by the gunpowder traces. As soon as I received your message. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. I heard your sirens from quite a ways off. Now, I would appreciate it if you'd hand this gun to your ballistics experts. I rummaged around for quite some time this evening. I had finally found it in a wall safe in my bedroom. Did you open all of these? No, sir. There was no point in it. Well, let's open them. Crime lab, pronto. Have ballistics, check the pistol against the two bullets they've got, then call me, understand? Don't you want me to check for Lieutenant Colombo? I'm in charge here, Grover. If that's the murder weapon, I'll take Mrs. Golden into custody. Step on it. What the devil are you doing here? Oh, just sort of killing time, looking around. You know, sir, I could... I could turn into a real orchid fancier since I met you. Will you tell me what you're doing here? It's very serious, sir. There's been a new development in the case. Yes, I know. They found the murder weapon at Kathy's house. They just came from there. Things certainly look bad for her. They certainly do, sir. Grover, is that you? Lieutenant, I don't understand. I was halfway downtown with Mrs. Goodlin when we were ordered back here. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I didn't mean to run you around town like that. Mrs. Goodlin, how are you? You must be exhausted. Would you like to sit down? No, no, I'll stand. Thank you. Uh, let me get you a chair. You'll be more comfortable. I know you've been up all night. Well, I think there'll be plenty of time to rest in jail, don't you? Sergeant, has this lady actually been arrested? Well, I, uh, sir, I, I phoned my report into Captain Ritchie. He was quite complimentary. She'll be charged as soon as we... No, Sergeant. No. I have some bullets here. This one is from the wrecked car, a 32 caliber, proven by ballistics to have been fired from the murder weapon. This one is from the body of the victim. Also 32 caliber, and proven by ballistics to have been fired from the same weapon as the first bullet. We know all about that. Tell him, young man. Uh, both. Both of those came from the gun that was found in her house, and uh, Sergeant Grover said they confirmed it as the murder weapon. Right. That's quite right. Sergeant, I don't want you to feel badly, because without you, I'd never gotten this idea. I mean, those technical things that you're so good at. You see, I've never used the metal detector before. That's why it took me nearly an hour. But you know these things really work. Amazing. You see that? What is it? Third bullet. Also a 32 caliber, and also proven by ballistics to have been fired 
by the same weapon that fired the first two bullets. Mr. Goodwin, I just don't know how you're going to explain this. But why should I have to? That's right. That's right, sir. That's what I was doing over there a little while ago. I found this third bullet buried here in this pile of dirt. I guess it was one of those bullets that you fired at that guy who broke in here about a year ago. You said you only hit dirt. I don't know how you're going to explain, sir, how the same gun that fired this bullet in the dirt ended up tonight in Mrs. Goodwin's dressing room. Sergeant, would you take Mr. Goodwin downtown, please? Mr. Jarvis Goodwin, it is my duty to inform you that anything you, you might, uh, this way, sir. Just one more thing.